In the last two videos, we have discussed electric fields, what creates them, what they look like, and how to use Gauss's law to analyze them. It seems only fitting that after devoting so much time to electric fields, we should spend some time investigating magnetism and the second of Maxwell's equations, which is often referred to as Gauss's law for magnetism. However, before we get into Gauss's law for magnetism, I think our discussion will be much more meaningful if we first establish a working definition of what magnetism is. If you look at the definition of magnetism in a dictionary, you'll probably get something like this. Magnetism is a physical phenomenon produced by the motion of electric charge, resulting in attractive and repulsive forces between objects. If you ask a physics teacher for their definition of magnetism, they'll probably define magnetism as a relativistic effect of moving charges. Both definitions are hard to approach, so we'll try to visualize a situation that explains how magnetism arises from physics. Imagine we have a wire with some current running through it. If we could zoom far enough into the wire, we would see largely stationary positive charges and negative charges that are zooming off to the right at a small percentage of the speed of light. The wire is electrically neutral from our vantage point because there is always the same amount of positive charges and negative charges in the wire. Let's introduce another player to the system, a proton that is adjacent to the wire. When the proton is stationary, it experiences no electromagnetic force from the wire because the wire is electrically neutral. However, the proton feels a magnetic force in the wire as soon as it starts to move, which agrees with the definitions of magnetism that we introduced earlier. The underlying mechanism beneath magnetism can be found in special relativity. This video is a magnetism video, not a special relativity video, so we'll keep our explanation simple for now. Special relativity tells us that when objects move at speeds close to the speed of light, their length contracts. Let's imagine for simplicity's sake that the proton that we introduced is moving to the right at the same speed as the electrons in the wire. From our point of view, the electrons in the proton are moving, and the positive charges in the wire are stationary. From the proton's point of view, the positive charges in the wire are moving, and itself and the negative charges are stationary. That means that from the proton's point of view, the positive charges in the wire are moving at a fraction of the speed of light backwards, which contracts their length according to relativity. This contraction squeezes the positive charges in the wire closer together while keeping the electrons at the same distance apart as before, so the wire repels our proton. I'll put a link in the description for an article that goes into more detail on the situation, but we're going to move on. Did you see what just happened? We just showed that magnetism is just electricity viewed from a different reference frame. However, magnetism can also occur in permanent magnets, like the magnets on your fridge. There's no current running through those, so what gives? Quantum mechanics taught us that electrons themselves can actually behave like magnets due to a property known as spin, which is far beyond the scope of this video. For our purposes, we can just say that when the magnetic properties of electrons in an object line up just right, as they do in iron, a material is magnetic. Hopefully that gave you a better picture of where magnetism comes from. Now let's talk about what it does. It is easiest to think about what a magnetic field is by examining how it affects a charge moving through the field. Let's introduce that magnetic field that points uniformly to the right as shown. Now, let's send a positive charge to the magnetic field vertically upward. According to the Lorentz force law, the force on our positive charge equals the charge of the object times the velocity of the object crossed to the magnetic field at the object's location. That means that the magnetic force on a moving charge will always be perpendicular to the charge's velocity and the field. In this example, the charge experiences a force out of the screen towards us. So, what is a magnetic field? Just like an electric field tells us the magnitude and direction of the force that a charge would experience in the area around the field, a magnetic field tells us the magnitude and direction of the force that a moving charge would experience in the area around a magnetic field. So let's review what we've done so far. We've discussed the underlying mechanism for how magnetic fields are created. We've also explained what they do to charges. That means we are now ready to tackle the integral form of Gauss's law for magnetism, which says that the integral of magnetic field dotted with vectors perpendicular with the surface area of a closed surface, in other words, a magnetic flux through a closed surface, is always zero. This illustrates a crucial difference between electricity and magnetism. In electric fields, we can trap charges inside surfaces by measuring the flux of a field through those surfaces, which we discussed in the last video. Not so for magnetism. There is no such thing as a magnetic charge or a magnetic monopole that is located at one discrete location. It is often expedient for scientists to pretend that magnets have a discrete monopole, but this is only done to accelerate calculations, not to accurately describe the magnetic properties of an object. 
To further drive this point home, imagine we have a bar magnet as pictured on screen. What if we cut the bar magnet down the middle? If magnets really did have monopoles, you'd expect that we would have a half a magnet that is all north pole and a half a magnet that is all south pole. Instead, we have two smaller magnets. We can't isolate a magnetic monopole from a magnet because they do not exist in our universe. While the integral form tells us a lot about the properties of magnetic fields, the differential form of Gauss's law for magnetism tells us a lot more about what to expect from the geometry of magnetic fields. The differential form says that the divergence of a magnetic field is always zero. You'll remember from the last video or from your own studies that divergence tells us the radiation of a field from a point. That means that the magnetic field lines don't radiate to or from a point in space. Instead, they circulate along closed paths. Up to this point, we've examined electric fields and magnetic fields, only pausing briefly to show that they are intimately connected. In the next videos, we will examine how electricity can influence magnetism and vice versa. I hope you'll join me. Please leave a comment if you have any questions, feedback, or something interesting to share on this subject. I'd love to hear from you.